everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you days two, four, and five of the 31 days of gel printing uh, challenge over on Instagram. I'm trying to film all my processes so that you guys can see uh, what I'm doing each day, but without making a video every single day. So for day two, the prompt, then this is from Birgit Coopson, Birgit however you say her name, uh, and the, I showed the list at the beginning. If you, It's not too late to join if you guys want to join, but uh, for this prompt, it was peek through, and I could think of three ways to create a peek through uh, gel print. That would be something that appears to be peeking behind something else. My first idea was to take a, a bare plate, put a stencil on it that has a lot of open spaces as a mask so it's now covering up the blank part and then I used a couple other stencils to add some uh, different colors and textures over the top of the stencil using a small brayer and then I brayered a darker color over the whole thing let it dry somewhat <laughs> and then now I'm uh, adding a silver paint over the whole thing in order to pull up that that silver paint will marry with the other paint and then pull up the whole thing hopefully all nice and clean and then those colorful pieces will appear to be peeking through the mandala design which should come out in a silver color so that was my first print and I said, that's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. But I have some other ideas of ways to create the same thing. So before I did that, I um, wanted to pull up this excess uh, beautiful paint that's on there in crusty bits. To, because you know, as I'm, as I'm going here, I'm working on making double-sided prints to create a gel print journal for myself to work in because I just love working over gel prints as a journal. It really gives you pattern and interest on the page before you even start making an art journal page. So that was my second print. And then I thought to myself, what if I used a light color, in this case, titanium white, which is a nice opaque color, over the whole plate um, instead of leaving it completely bare. And then I decided to remove some of the white paint uh, through the stencil so that now there's white underneath and then there's open spaces. And I ended up going through twice. Then I took the stencil off, so now I have a white image and then I used a magazine page that had a lot of nice color and pattern on it to be the thing that's going to peek through from behind. It was an ad for uh, paint colors with a bunch of paint chips on it so I thought that turned out pretty cool. Has has a lot of interest in pattern and that will be one will be good for some collage. So then my next idea add a fairly opaque neutral color. And th in this case, I decided to use slate gray from the Dilusions. Um, this paint dries too fast on my plate here in Arizona. So I added some slow drying medium or, uh, you know, slower <laughs> drying medium on the plate as well and mixed it in with the brayer. And then I used a circle stencil that had a lot of open spots and um, removed paint through it. So now I have gray underneath the stencil. And, I, and because I put that slow drying agent in there, I really needed to go over and remove paint from the openings of the stencil twice because it was now kind of goopy and thick. So I ended up doing that twice. So now I'm ready to add back in color. So I take some bright colors, um, cherry pie, uh, a, a sunshine yellow from the two paint, and then this uh, squeezed orange from Dilusions. And I just go over in random patterns with my small brayer, my two inch brayer, 
and then I take some bubble wrap and make, um, you know, remove with the bubble wrap, make some, some textured prints over the top of all that. Then I remove <laughs> the stencil. So now you see the gray underneath. And then that is going to be my pattern, my peek through pattern. And I, and you can see I'm doing my little tag. I'm, as I'm going through this, I'm also making a tag book with all the different ideas so that I can remember in the future what I did. So I pulled that one off. It was pretty darn cool. Look at that. That's cool. So all those bright colors are peeking through that real neutral, almost uh, gears looking sort of a uh, pattern. I thought that was cool. Then I decided I better pick up some of that leftover paint. And so I used some purple, dark purple paint and went over that, made sure that I did a really good job of burnishing because I want that purple paint to, to marry with the gray paint and bring up the pattern. So that's what I ended up with. That one's pretty cool too for a dark print. And then just to clean everything back up off the plate, I went over it with titanium white again because there's still a lot of paint and pattern left on there. Crusty bits. Hashtag crusty bits. <laughs> I guess that's a joke that probably only a few people get, but yeah. So that one's a light print with uh, some purple and gray, and that's really pretty as well. So that was day two peek through, and there's some close-ups of some of the prints. So what happened to day three? It's in a different video that you'll see later on in the week. Um, I, I had done an entire different video that has just that in it. Um, so now we're on to texture. Day three stencils, and you'll just you'll see it in a different video completely. And day one, you saw in my pick a stick challenge video at the beginning, if you're paying attention. <laughs> so that's why we're starting with day two. So texture. Um, in preparation for this, I put some uh, different textured stuff on some paper that is modeling paste through a stencil, and let that dry. And I used that textured piece over the whole brayered 12 by 12 and there I am making one of my little tags. I ended up making two tags for texture and then here I am picking a, picking up a second print which is the opposite texture. So the first print that I did was over that modeling paste which is just raised up and it made a pattern in the paint. So then the second one that I pull up has the, the reverse pattern made by the texture. So that was one of my ideas for texture. Another idea, which I think is this one, um, I was having a little bit, bit of trouble with bubbles in my plate there. <laughs> I had to keep flopping it. Uh, this is dried crackle paste, texture paste, you know, that stuff that makes crackles when it dries. And boy, is that cool. I'm gonna have to put that on an art journal page. I've used, I've done white before, uh, white crackle paste and then torn it up and use it as texture on things, but I've never colored it like that. So I thought that was pretty neat. And then of course the reverse is that there, that texture is now left in the paint on the plate and I can pick that up. So now I have a very crackly looking print. Isn't that neat? That's probably my favorite one of the textured ones. Maybe there's another one coming up. That's really cool though. So that could be my favorite. I'm not sure. So then I had also put some of the crackle paste on a tag and some of the texture paste on a tag. So here I am uh, <coughs> doing the exact same process. Only these are the tags I'm planning on putting in my tag book for the prompt texture. But the reason I left this in is they're taking it out. But the, the, the tags are meh, you know, they're the same as what I just did. But look at this print that I took after I pulled the tags off. This is what I thought was cool. You can see the tag shapes printed on the print. I thought that was pretty darn cool. 
I liked that a lot. So then there are so many things you can use to make texture in your prints. There's so many. And I decided to use some of my homemade texture tools um, in a couple different ways. I've, I've brayered some stuff onto my plate, but then it, I, and I'm using all my different, you know, junky leftover or homemade um, or textured pieces. That's textured fun foam. There's a stamp and a reverse stamp that Arlene uh, made for me and sent me in happy mail out of fun foam. That's an onion bag. There's some uh, drywall tape. There's some corrugated cardboard, all that type of stuff. And I, I put it, I stamped it into the paint while it was on the plate to make one print, which I'm going to make postcards out of that. That's why it says thank you <laughs> on the back. That's the back of a postcard. So I'll cut it into quarters and then I'll have thank you postcards when I'm done collaging on the top. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? I thought that one turned out really good. Very textury. And then the one on the six by six, what I did was when I was using all those texture tools to stamp to the paint on the 12 by 12, then I used the excess paint on the texture tools and stamped it onto the six by six, which already had a layer of paint on it that was from previously. So then to pick up the excess texture um, as a ghost print, I put some titanium white on the big plate and then I took the small plate put some copper over the top of it. And these are two more really cool prints. That one's going in my uh, book right there, my um, jelly print art journal page book that you'll see sometime in the future. I don't know when. <laughs> and then that six by six one with the copper turned out really cool. Look at that. So that's the reverse of the other one because I was stamping the paint onto the plate with the texture tools. So I was having so much fun with that, I decided to make a dark print. So I put some copper on my plate. This is PBO iridescent. And then some different tools. That one's uh, made out of uh, meat tray. That one's made out of pieces of fun foam. That's a piece of packaging right there. Um, and these are pressure embossed pieces of cardstock run through one of those texture folders. Um, they make interesting prints as well. Interesting texture. So same process, removing paint with the texture tools on one side and applying paint on the other side. So then I got out some carbon black paint, which both my tubes of carbon black paint are gloppy and I need to get rid of them and get some new paint. Um, so hard to do when you have, <laughs> you have a full tube that's just bleh. Ooh, and there's my favorite stencil print right there. I'm just doing the other side so that I can put it in my book. That print turned out so cool and you'll see that in a different video coming up, oh, I think on Monday the 12th. That's probably when I scheduled it. So now we have all the copper texture on top of the black. But of course my black paint kind of turned out kind of gloppy because it's gloppy. So that was texture prompt for day uh, four. So there's some close-ups of some of the prints right there. Day five, crayon resist. How fun. If you're interested in resist, you probably uh, can watch the live on the 8th over on Art Joy of Sharing. We're going to be doing resist techniques with all different types of stuff on our live show. And I'll probably have a speed through of that too um, if I get it done. I have a lot of things going on. So this is a piece of tag board from packaging. And I'm using a waxy crayon, which is a uh, what they call a china marker. It's basically just a black wax crayon. And I drew the swirl pattern all over that um, piece of tag board. And then now I'm applying paint to my 12 by 12 um, cad orange and magenta light, I think it is. 
and then I'm pressing that on there and you can see where the crayon was written onto the tag board it has resisted the paint and so it's left on the plate and the rest of the paint is somewhat pulled up off of the plate so then when I pull my print I have what is called a crayon resist print which is really cool really really cool resist techniques always fascinate me the original resist technique that I learned years and years ago from a friend of my mom's who was a teacher was batik doing it on um, fabric and using actual hot wax onto fabric to make patterns and then dyeing the fabric and then ironing the wax off and crayon resist reminds me a whole lot of batik and I just I think it's just cool <laughs> I really like it so here's my second print with that same paint and I've just put some unbleached titanium on there to pull up the residual paint and resist which now I've got the opposite effect of what I had before so isn't that interesting pretty cool I suggest everyone tries it so then here's a piece of six by six tag board same thing I thought you know it would be really fun to draw a face and so I drew a face beginning out with um, graphite so that I could erase, you know, because I didn't want to just go right in there with the China marker. And then I drew over it with the China marker and then started to try to use it. Uh, I struggled. I'm not sure why. First, I put some paint on there. Um, in light colors and so when I pulled off the the resist then it had light colored lines and then I went over it with a dark color and was hoping that the light lines would show up on the dark and it kind of does but not to the extent that I was hoping um, it's still cool but it's subtle it's very very subtle so I thought well okay that's cool but you can't really see the image as much as I want so then I thought okay I'll make a print of bright colors and then I'll print over the top of it as a second layer with dark colors and it should show up so that's what I'm doing here is making a print and then I use some Payne's gray um, having a little bit of problem with my blacks so I thought, oh, I'll use a Payne's gray because those black, that black paint is so gross. But this is a fluid paint, so it's a lot lighter um, application and it worked kind of, but again, very subtle. And so I kind of got frustrated. I, I decided that maybe that particular piece of tag board that I used might be super absorbent and maybe it was absorbing too much of the paint. I'm not sure, but anyway, I decided to move on back to my swirly one which you should be able to use over and over I think that probably it's a good idea to wipe off the paint once it's dry off of the wax and then um, you know use it again but you should be able to save these and use them over and over because the wax doesn't go anywhere but it might get a little bit of coating of, of uh, paint on it that might need to be wiped off so I made another print with that uh, in some kind of fall colors and it did not leave the residual that I thought. So then this is where I, I got that other plate back out and I was trying to wipe off the paint off of the wax um, to, tr to try it again and I thought you know what I just like that. <laughs> I think that's really cool. <laughs> So I moved on. I just moved on at that point. So here I was thinking I could use some oil pastels. Now, crayon resist obviously w could be used with crayons, but I don't have any crayons, like just, you know, actual kids' crayons. I was looking and I couldn't find any. So I decided to use oil pastels. And first I went over a stencil and like kind of, you know, made a scribbly one. And then I turned the stencil over onto some paper 
to wipe the pastel off and it made a reverse image, which I tr also wanted to try. And then I was thinking to myself, oh, well, what if you had to, had a kid's crayon drawing? Like if when you, you had a precious something from a kid or a grandkid, you could use it to print. So I made a kid's drawing. <laughs> So I don't have a kid here. Not a, I had, none of my kids are young enough anymore. I have kids here, but they're not young enough. So then I started in printing again. Um, this time I made a bright print on my six by six. And then I went over with a lighter color and did the crayon resist using that pastel piece that I'd made. But the light color paint is not opaque enough. I should have used white or something and then that would have worked just fine. But it didn't come out very well. You'll see when it when I pull it. And then over on my 12 by 12 plate I put some uh, bright blue paint and put my crayon drawing. Had two different patterns. It has the one with the the rubbed off oil pastel which turned out really nicely and then the kids drawing and you see the kids drawing is left on the plate so I'm letting that dry I'm showing that showing you that the light green paint was not opaque enough to really work with that one it was okay but not great so then I put some other paint on over here some light blue and some light yellow over that bright blue it was really wet I didn't leave it long enough to dry so then I had to burnish it again while I was at it I pulled that one off there we go so if you've enjoyed this video remember to give it a thumbs up leave me a comment so I know you're here subscribe if you haven't share if you want to. And that is it for me. I hope you'd enjoyed it. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.